This episode of the Esoteric Order of Roleplayers is brought to you by the generosity of our backers on Patreon. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash esotericrp to find out how you can become a backer too. The Esoteric Order of Roleplayers present Bluebeard's Bride, a horror tabletop RPG, written by Whitney Strix Beltran, Marissa Kelly, and Sarah Richardson. Episode 1 A Strange Beginning. In this episode, the group convenes to go over the rules of the game, review the classic tale of Bluebeard, pick which sister they'll be playing, and define their characters. Is there any way to win this thing? Uh, <laughs> That's a great question. Okay, there's certain there's certain ground rule realities. Uh-huh. Bluebeard is a murderer. Yep. There's no okay. postmodern, okay. you know, but what if Bluebeard Bluebird? Yeah. Bluebeard was uh, you know, just yeah. misunderstood. Right, right. You know, right. like just so no. it's a murdering shithead. Okay. Yeah, good. So uh, we have to know that going in that he's a murdering He's a murdering shithead. shithead. Okay. Well, we know we that do know. Our, our, as players. As, right. as players we know that. Right. Yes, and in oh, fact okay. one of the points of the game is you're taking tokens of faithfulness versus disloyalty. Okay. Uh, faithfulness heals you. Disloyalty okay. harms you. So okay. you gotta find a balance right. there, you know. There's a final room. That's the end game. <laughs> Alright? So the game yes. itself is exploring the house. And the and then the end game is triggered when you go to the final room. Okay. And then you decide. And you, you can decide and it's gonna be based on what has happened to you as the game has moved along. Okay. So you might have different choices uh, okay. available to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like, mm-hmm. a, like our choices earlier on change what you are yes. able to offer to us. And to exactly. spell your own horror. Yay! Exactly. Like to page 75. Right. Right. Yeah, right. pretty much, pretty much. Okay. Are we all aspects of the same female human yes. beings? Yes, you are all playing. Five different human beings. You are playing the bride. the bride. You are the bride. You're just all aspects of her personality. I okay. love how like ultimately cooperative that is. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, or delightfully not so, like to have a part of your personality that's like, yes. don't give a fuck what the yes. rest of you want. Just they, just absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. You're going to take turns being in control of the bride ah. with Ooh. the wedding ring. Oh my god, it's okay. the wedding ring. Yep. So the ring Full will disclosure, get... disclosure, that's my wedding ring. Yes. Oh, okay. Desiree's red wedding ring. Duh. You don't so, get to keep it. The, so, winner, the winner doesn't get to keep it. And don't, in a uh, fit of prideful rage, don't throw it or... <laughs> that's right. So do we embody Desiree? Do we... No. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I beg of you. I, I don't like you. the mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. The sage has got it. Uh, that's the lady part. Oh, hell. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, um... Of me. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that could be our own RPG is embodying devs. No, no. that makes him the, the murderer. Oh, That's not no. No. no, different game. We'll make up okay. a new no, game. No, don't make up any game about me ever. <laughs> Back to it. Yeah, right. All right. What die do we need, by the way? What? Who? What? what? Who? Die? Do we need any Oh, I thought, said, I thought you said what died. Uh, oh, what you need, do we need 2d6. Oh, I like that. That's it? That's yeah. it. This is like mm. Cobb's uh, whatever and whatever, that little steampunk one that I have Cobb's. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or Velvet Glove. Or Velvet Glove. Night Witches. Night Witches. And Night Witches. I don't really like Velvet mm-hmm. Glove. You did or did not? I did. I did too. I love yeah. it. Fun. Once, I, the, once I, the full version comes out, I, I hope I can uh, yeah. run Yeah. I'm still hoping we'll play it again. Yeah, no, I'm still exploring my character and trying Thank to figure out. Yeah, can we bring sure. our characters into oh, the Oh, absolutely. Game? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. I just feel mm-hmm. like that's never going to be a game I'm going to want to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 For everybody. Yeah. yeah. I work with underprivileged teenagers. That's just not fun. You know what? It's like that's my real life. <laughs> that's uh, it's dealing with teenage girl problems okay. and like all the things I can't do to help them. It's, right. Right. It's too real. Right. Too much. No, that's totally fair. Yeah. Absolutely. 
All right, so um, just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover before we get into it. We got the basic structure of the game. Um, yeah, okay, so. <laughs> and we're good, go. And we're good. All right, so I know I posted it, but I'm just going to read it again. Yes, yes. Story of Bluebeard. Yes. Are you reading it to us? <laughs> yes. Uh, Right. Into the record. Here we go. <laughs> okay, exactly. You are recording again, right? Yes, okay. thank you. Once upon a time, there lived a lord whose palace was so splendid and so richly furnished that even the sultans could not be compared with it. He had dishes of gold and silver, sofas and chairs upholstered in the finest silk. The walls were adorned with every kind of curious antique. There was, however, something very odd about this lord. The color of his beard was a rich and shocking blue. His countenance was both distinct and unmistakable, and so he was never spoken of by his real title, which was grand and noble, but instead he was simply referred to as Bluebeard. He was a fearsome man with deep-set eyes, and he was known for having an uneven temper. Even so, Bluebeard had been married many times. No one quite knew what had become of each one of his wives in turn, as there had never been a funeral at the palace that anyone living could. <coughs> they simply vanished, and when time passed, he would marry anew. One day, Bluebeard went hunting in the countryside near his estate. With the sun high, he came upon a dilapidated farmstead and wished to slake his thirst and rest. The farmers were eager to please the powerful lord and sent their lovely young daughter scurrying to serve him tea and bread. Bluebeard was instantly smitten with her beauty. He decided right then that he would take her as his wife. For a week, he entertained her amongst a cadre of other fine lords and ladies. No expense was spared. His wealth was dazzling in the way a cobra dazzles a mouse. After that single hedonistic week, Bluebeard came to call with a marriage proposal. Bluebeard scared the young woman, but she couldn't let her family languish in poverty. And besides, maybe his beard wasn't quite that blue. <laughs> she accepted his proposal. In short order, they were married at the palace. Such a sight it was. A thousand white lilies decorated the pagoda for the ceremony. Delightful incense burned throughout the night. The young bride awoke the next morning in her bed alone, her marriage yet unconsummated. This caused her some amount of anxiety, yet also relief. She was escorted by a servant to the dining hall, and there she found Bluebeard breaking his fast. He greeted her cheerily and bade her eat. Bluebeard informed her that he had received urgent news and must leave at once on a journey of much importance and would likely be gone many weeks. To console her, he kissed her affectionately and gave her the keys to every door in the house. He bade her to amuse herself in his absence. Here, he said, are the keys to your new home. The smallest key, my dear, is for the closet at the end of the great gallery. O open everything, go everywhere, save this one little room. I forbid you to use that key. The bride promised to faithfully obey his orders. She stood waving to him from the palace gates as his caravan of camels and horses kicked up a trail of dust as they departed. No sooner was he gone than she began to wonder what could possibly be hidden behind the forbidden door. Did he hide disturbing habits or unseemly desires? Was there some secret treasure known only to those of noble blood? Did he hide a mistress? Or was it something too terrible for her innocent mind to guess at? She distracted herself from the idea with an exploration of the palace. She inspected the galleries, each more magnificent and splendid than the last. She tried on exotic furs and rubbed herself in priceless oils. She visited the servants in the kitchen, which caused quite a stir, and luxuriated in the steamy marble baths. All the while, her curiosity was gnawing at her. Was not the palace now her domain? Did not her husband trust her with his secrets? <clears throat> she idled in her bedchambers, becoming lethargic and gloomy. The splendor of her surroundings took on a sour bent, and she could take no pleasure in them. Finally, she could resist the siren call of the forbidden door no longer. In the pitch of night, she took a single lamp and descended a back staircase to the gallery. Upon reaching the closet door, she paused, remembering her husband's command. She feared what might happen if she disobeyed, but the impulse of her curiosity was too strong to resist. With trembling hands, she fit the small key into the lock and opened the door. At first, with the weak lamplight, she could not see much. As her eyes adjusted, she realized what was in the room. The floor was covered in congealing blood, and the walls were lined with headless bodies, Bluebeard's previous wives. A great scream tore itself from her throat, and she dropped the key. It was a few moments before she came back to herself. In a daze, she grabbed the key from the floor and rushed out of the room. She locked it behind her and returned to her chambers. In the daylight of the following morning, it all seemed like a dream. But when she examined the small key, she found a stain of blood upon it. She wiped it carefully, but the blood remained. Then she washed it and scoured it with sand, but to no avail. 
That very evening, Bluebeard came back from his journey, saying that he had received word on the road that the business had already been settled. His wife tried her hardest to appear happy at his early return, but on the inside she quailed. She waited with dread anticipation for him to ask for the return of his keys. He did so upon the next morning. He looked through the keys and saw that the littlest one was stained. How comes this blood upon the key? I do not know, she faltered. But I do, mocked Bluebeard. You have done as I have forbidden. Well now, you will go in once again and take your place among the ladies you were so curious to see. The bride threw herself at her husband's feet and begged him to forgive her disobedience, but Bluebeard had a heart of flinty stone. Prepare for your death, he declared. No, please, give me but a few minutes, she cried, so that I may pray. Bluebeard agreed, and the bride rushed to the top of the nearest tower, hoping against hope that someone, such as her father or mother, may be approaching for a visit so that she could give them a sign to make haste. Penance whipped silently in the sun, but nobody was coming. The bride wept bitterly. Given no choice, the bride descended. He led her towards the tiny, horrible room. Near its entrance, he bade her kneel on the rough flagstone. She obeyed, weeping, and without ceremony, he chopped off her head and put her body in among the other wives. Boom. So what does he do with the heads in that one? You know, I wonder that too. a separate room for those? <laughs> well, clearly like, not. She got two. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, she should have run off to the fucking armory and grabbed a sword, is what she should have done. Well, she didn't, so. Yep. It's true. Where are we going? We've Lots of should have in that one. Yeah. Okay. And there are many variations on the tale, some of which yeah. have mm-hmm. the bride being totally. rescued. Yeah. Some of By which. her brothers, mm-hmm. yeah, her yep. sisters, her creatures. Yep. Mm-hmm. Likewise, there's no yeah. set, um, there, there's sort of an implied setting for the game, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is sort of roughly modernish. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm picturing like a 1960s Italian horror movie with oh, Vincent movie. Price as Bluebeard. Totally. He's only on screen for like two minutes yes. but he gets top billing. You know? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. That'd be awesome. But I was also thinking it'd be cool to do one set in like New Mexico in the 1700s. Oh, yeah. Oh, like a powerful, powerful land baron. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Padron. Or you could do a medieval one with Gilles de Rey and Brittany. You know, like yes. the original Bluebeard. Yeah. Nice. Or even like a Japanese, like, hand mm-hmm. period with a big estate, you oh, know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. I mean. But we'll stick with the default one. Okay. All right. Um, this, is a, this is a one-shot game. This is a game intended to be played in one session, right. but also to have a high replayability factor. Really? And, yes. And in fact, the bride that you play in this game, if she does not make it out, mm-hmm. becomes yet another bride in the house. Oh, yeah. So that if you keep replaying it, you can meet All right. previous incarnations Interesting. of the bride. Okay. So, you are playing the bride. Uh, the game starts literally with Bluebeard departing. You are, you know, you have waved him farewell and he's on his way. We have the keys. You have the keys. So you have been married, and um, and yet not consummated. And, uh, yeah, fascinating. Not consummated. Why? Yes. So you play five different uh, sides of the bride's psyche. So we've got the animus. You hold on to righteousness with both hands. Others admire your strength and bow to your will. We've got fatal. You drip, drip sensuality from your lips. Others watch your every move and crave for you to take control. <laughs> We've got mother. Mother. You walk with authority. Others ache for your approval and long for you to soothe their wounds. We have the virgin. You see beauty where there is none. Others seek comfort in your warmth and delight in your obedience. And lastly, the witch. You braid magic from shadow and blood. Others desire a taste of your sin and pray for your undoing. Wow. So these are all elements of the same person. Yes. And obviously one, one per player. So, is there anyone that's jumping out at any one of you that you want to draw steel over? Yes, hello. Animus. You want to play the animus? animus? Anyone nice have any objections choice. to that? Nice person. No? Okay, pass that down, please. Whoops, hey, oh. Dang it. You want a witch. Are we going to arm wrestle for witch? Who wants witch? No, but I'm actually really happy to. T- all of those sound delightful. They do, don't they? So, I would be happy to take it. Tough them. choice. Don't Can look at the roll back. For it? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, like you want a random roll? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. I'm actually, I was like totally down for that before this. What? For, for what? Rolling? Rolling? Yeah, like, yeah, you know what? Wait, so Since it's a one shot, one. I'd rather play a character that I keep it, keep it, uh, keep it random. Although we're rolling yeah. for four, right? So we want to do We're four rolling fours. for four, so you actually you do want D fours. Oh, yeah. right, of course. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I rolled a six. Did I throw it off? Did I throw it off by picking it? No, no, actually, this is fine because no, I only have one D five. But everybody has a D4. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have them already selected? I, I'll you go one, two, three, four. four. Okay, I got one. 
I got a two. I got Mother. A two. Fatal. I got a two also. Okay, let's oh, re-roll right. between Renee Rolling and two. Sage. Right. She got a two. No, I got a two. Oh. What'd you get? Also a two. We got three twos. All right, re-roll the three of you. Okay. I got a four. Two. One. Okay, so you keep Mother. Uh, Sage, you get Virgin. Renee, and you witch. Which gets a witch. All right, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, just look at the front for now. The back is something you flip to later. Uh, all right, <laughs> do not look at the which back. Which is the back? Uh, the, the, the one. The darker side. The darker side, thank okay. you. What if I have to look at the back? Oh! <laughs> you are forbidden now! <laughs> what spots will appear all over the paper and you'll go up and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like flames. <laughs> All right, so um, so now we're going to create. Okay. Now, so you're all called the sisters. That's the collective group name. Right. You're, okay. the, you're the sisters inhabiting the bride. Okay. So um, let me just get the uh, playbooks open in front of me here. So these are Jungian archetypes. Right. Yeah. Across across yeah. Across yeah. Across right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you've got wedding prep. So you all answer <laughs> questions of what you did uh, at the wedding that you just had. You also have sisterly bonds and you have stats. And then all of you have a face. So you have to choose one face for yourself. Okay. Okay, there's three variations on every sister. You do not have to tell other people what the face is. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, that to me implies that you can probably leave it um, you know, unless there's one that you know really jumps out at you, you make a mental note about it. Mm. But if like two or three look good to you, just kind of you know you can keep it up in your head. Like, well, maybe I'll do this. So of course, as soon as you do a face move, which is choose. those things on the thing, oh, then, then, you're, oh, okay. then you're kind of declaring the the face what that you chose. Do you want us okay. to keep these clean, or are they for mark them up? Ooh, yeah, luxury. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so decadent. I yes. get to write on my shirt. I know. I'm crazy. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of like, these are crazy. I know. Aren't they awesome? Like I told you this game freaked me out just this reading dank. it. Dank. Well, this, this one, of, dank. one of the faces. One of the faces I can choose is called the shield, and it mm -hmm. says when one of your sisters marks trauma, explain to her how the trauma she is experiencing is her fault, uh -huh. and then ask if she believes you. Oof. If she believes you, she marks one less trauma. If she rejects your explanation, mark one trauma as you experience the shame of your own impotence. <laughs> oh, that's too real. Again, we're going to need these X's. Animus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Animus, yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. there's, yeah. there's two other faces that... And we have to just choose one. Yep. God damn. Okay. I know. <clears throat> um... Okay, so as you're as you're absorbing that, I'm absorbing it. You are absorbing it, and um, we're also gonna just we're gonna go around and we're gonna talk about um, the various and sundry things. So can I read a little bit more? Of course. Just a wee of bit. Of course. Just, just wanna. Yes, take your time. Have you all chosen a face yet or no? I have. You have? I knew mine immediately. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I have one that I'm like, mm -hmm. will it come up? Or how often will it come up? Right. But it would be so good if it did. Yes! And then the other one that I'm like, this is, that one's pretty. Can you pretty explain the off. difference between blood and carnality and resilience? Sure, of course. Because um, I'm not sure what they're referring to. Yes, there is. Okay, so, um, stats, there we go. Carnales. That's what it says? No. no, no. Absolutely not. I was like, what? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, blood is your connection to the horrific. Okay. How closely tied are you to the darkest sides of human nature? Carnality is your expression of the horrific. Do you weaponize your sexuality or give in to the base instincts such as violence? Resilience is your resistance to the horrific. How much horror can you stand before you break? Hmm. Okay. And uh, I'm sure as you've all seen, you have one that's plus one, one that's zero, and one that's minus one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's your character called, Jade? Fatal. So carnality is how you express horror, and blood is how you feel about it. It is how horror. you're connected to horror. How closely are you tied to the darkest sides of human nature? 
Hmm, that's a good one. I'm already fascinated by this. This is already amazing. <laughs> and I'm done. I love the uh, they have a, <laughs> they have a little thing in the back here about how the how the game came to be. Mm. Whitney, Sarah, and Marissa began work on Bluebeard's Bride at the 2014 Gen Con Hacking as Women workshop. During the workshop, systems coaches walk participants through a series of tabletop systems and the core elements of game design. Marissa was paired with Whitney and Sarah as their systems coach. The workshop was the first time all three had spent a substantial amount of time together, and their efforts at Gen Con created the basis for Bluebeard's Bride. After the workshop, they continued to labor on the project, playtesting and reworking it until they created the final refined version found here. Yeah, that's good. It's really good. It's a beautiful game book as well. Yeah, it sure yeah. is, isn't it? Yeah, impressively lovely. Are we supposed to be filling out this wedding prep stuff right no. now? No. Okay, good. No, I'm just Are giving we supposed all to not be to... doing it? No. Well, I mean, you can if you want. <clears throat> yeah. right. Are you all ready? Can we start going well, around the table? I just, it's like, I think it's taking time to think things. Of course, of course. And I just want to mark down a couple notes in that. Same. Yeah. And then yeah, when yeah. we go around, that'll inform. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we do want to kind of go around and vocalize everything, mm -hmm. but uh, if there's things that are jumping out at you again, you know, that you want to just jot down right away, please feel free. Let's see here. So, Jen, you have mother. I do. Okay, so, um, as you may have guessed by looking at your own sheets, each one of you is going to play a part in defining what the bride looks like. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Jen, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the bride's figure like? Um, I think that the bride expresses at her core a sense of innocence. So I would put her in a less wide mm. frame, mm -hmm. in a more narrow mm -hmm. hip width. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, youthful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, youthful. So, 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 like a sylph. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Renee, you're the witch. So what is the bride's hair like? Twisted and bound. Mm. <laughs> nice. Mm. Okay. What color is it? Oh. Yeah. Mm. I'm thinking about that. Hmm. Mm. Uh, let's just make her brunette. Okay. okay. Sure. Okay. What are the bride's hands like, Animus? Um, they're small but powerful. Fatale, what does the bride's mouth look like? Uh, prone to a knowing smirk. Ooh. <laughs> cool. She's coming together. Yeah. And lastly, virgin. What are the eyes? Who you call the virgin? Mm, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, deep blue pools that seem to shift with the tides. Ooh. I like it. And framed by dark lashes, her eyebrows are thin but long. Mm. Hmm. I don't know if there's a word for that when they like traverse most of your face. Mm. Mm. Okay. Nice. All right. So. Next up, uh, we'll go back around to uh, Mother. Okay. So, um, what do others wish was different about your figure? Jesus. Mm. <laughs> what do others wish? Others. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it's a danger to be unable to easily bear children, so mm -hmm. I'm going to stick with the hip thing. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, it would be better if they were wider. Yeah. More, um, more childbirth friendly. More accommodating to Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we've got for which, um, how do others like, how do others like you to wear your hair? Oh. In proper curls that frame her face. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Don't mind me, I'm just jotting down notes for no reason. <laughs> um, Don't be creepy. Animus, what? You my said job. curly hair, it means you're 
didn't you die at the end? <laughs> game over. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> oh, by the way, my, my name is the, as the person who's running the game is the groundskeeper. So, just uh, a friendly neighborhood groundskeeper. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's so scary. It's still getting yeah. creepy. Yeah. Yes. Getting creepier. This mentions that, and I wondered. I was like, who the fuck is the groundskeeper? groundskeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's me, Mish. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, I like it. <laughs> All right. Animus, what weakness do you give away when others hold your hand? So, the weakness is my provincial upbringing. So, they're rough and I've lost a nail. Mm. Uh, and so, they're, yeah. they, even though they're small and powerful hands, they're still they, they're they, worn. Yeah, They've scrubbed cost. laundry yeah. and dishes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's beautiful. good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I see, yeah. yeah. All right, Fatal, how do others keep you quiet? By expecting obedience and false modesty. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay. False modesty. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Okay. I know. I'm scared. And <laughs> Virgin, how do others know you want them when they gaze into your eyes? Because there's a constant longing in them, but sometimes mm-hmm. most people mistake it for more personal than it actually is. Oh. <laughs> Sense of general longing. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Some people personalize it. Like, yeah. You want me? Project. Yeah. Like, I just project, want. Project, project. I yeah. just want things. Uh huh. Yep. Mm. All right, mother. Yes. When you were leaving behind, what are you leaving behind from your provincial life to become Bluebeard's bride? Um, I'm very excited to be leaving behind my uh, crappy job of grinding <laughs> grain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Grinding Love grain. it. We are uh, Milner's daughter, is that what that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm like, yay, this is a beautiful palace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, and uh, same question for the witch. What was that? Oh. What are you leaving behind? Oh, um, a plebeian lack of judgment, which has become a contest of inquisitive and false friendship. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> what? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so people, people, were my, yeah, people were my friends, but now they're all fake. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Everybody's so different. I haven't changed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's so deep. I picked like an object. <laughs> <laughs> that's also yeah, that's perfect. Fine. You can say it's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be the flat one next time. <laughs> no, no, no. They're not flat. They're all. You know, yeah, different. they're all rich in their own way. This is a great story creating tool. Is it? Having uh, five people create one, one person, person? Yeah. Yeah. it really creates a real depth. Depth. All right, Animus. Oh, uh, so I did. I went for a stereotypical childhood sweetheart. Mm. Uh, sure. So. Well, sure. I like socks. So even though people are super fake, I know that this person is very is always true. What yeah. Is, what do we? I, mean, I don't know. Anything? Who the, I don't I just, know. Just yeah, we'll that. see. Right. We'll see. All right. Mm. Okay. okay. And Ooh. Fatal. <laughs> well, I had already put sweetheart because <laughs> Fatal. Oh, um, sure. oh, but yeah. let's say um, freedom to conduct the affairs of my own day as I wish. Yes. Sure. Mm-hmm. And Virgin. I said a sewing wheel, which I'm not changing. That's <laughs> fine. Oh, that's fine. good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But really it good. seemed very like leaving one fairy tale for another fairy tale. Like mm-hmm. she secretly mm-hmm. actually sews all the time, which is very mm-hmm. Rumpelstiltskin. Mm-hmm. 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 And now she's jumping into the fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we've got, uh, I think it's the same question for everyone. Yes. Mm-hmm. When you first met, what loving gesture did Bluebeard make that won you over? This is going to get interesting. Mm-hmm. It is, and I'm going to steal something from today. Oh. When, uh, when I first met him, he grabbed me around my waist and fed me some of his honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Which? A lock of his beard. Ooh. Ooh. That's so titillating. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It is. Animus? He treated me like an equal. Ooh. Which was weird. Ooh, he was like just very it. like direct and like yes. he treated me like as the like I'd never really been talked to that way before. Right. Mm. So it was right. like we were on the Wasn't same treating you like a peasant. Exactly. Yeah. Or even as a like right. just like as an equal. Right. right. With equal intelligence wow. and the ability to make decisions and stuff. It was very surreal. Yeah. Wow. Kind of threw me. Sure. Fatal? 
He showered me with flattering gifts worthy of my beauty. <laughs> nice. Oh. The gift card to Sephora. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one gift card to Sephora. Uh, one. There's, there's a lot one. on it. Well, yeah, it's a platinum gift card. Credit card. Credit card. Credit card. The Sephora yeah. credit card. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Jesus. All right. And the he. He said he bent to one knee and offered me champagne and said nothing would be as sweet across my lips as you, but would you join me in a drink anyway? Oh. Oh. oh, that ties into the honey feeding too. Same yes. idea. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. And um, great. So then, what gift did you present to Bluebeard uh, before the wedding, and why did you choose this? Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I'm giving something to Bluebeard. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll give him my my mortar and pestle. Mm. Um, because I believe he's going to save me from a life of toil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Yeah, in the kitchen, I know I have need of it. I have servants. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay. Which? I don't have a lot of stuff. Here. Chiseled flint. It lights the fire of desire and binds him in devotion. Oh. <laughs> That's some good witchiness well right there. Well done. <laughs> yeah, love it. Okay, Animus? Um, I gave him my word that I would trust him implicitly. Ooh, and why did you give that to him? Because I love it. that was just this element of um, just being forthright, being honest. So you want to establish a complete trust. honest interaction. Right. Wow, okay. that's beautiful. Yeah. Establish honesty. Okay, Fatal. An opulent tray of ripe and sumptuous fruits. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. And why is that? Oh, alluding to all of the delight and sweetness that marriage can bring. Mm. Nice. Okay, and Virgin? These precious little cloth flowers, thinking he could tie them in his beard. Oh! <laughs> Side. Yay! I love that. yeah. That's awesome. Wearing a bell though tied in his beard, so you always know where he is. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that's yes. actually a good idea. <laughs> Did not occur to me. We still do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not too much. Yeah, no. Uh, we can win him over. Those tiny bells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Honey, just I just think it'll sound so magical if you just put these bells in your beard. <laughs> no, seriously, nothing else gets me going. Like, <laughs> yeah, beard bells. Beard bells. <laughs> I can work with that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all right, and do you trust your generous husband, Bluebeard, or do you hold unkind suspicions, and why? Uh, I do not trust him. Okay. Because it is my belief that wealth has a price, and he has quite a bit of wealth, and there is no great wealth without great crime. Mm. Mm. Okay. Which? Mine's really similar. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I'm suspicious. You can't trust anyone living in such elite isolation. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's up. Yeah. Okay. Animus? I trust him. Because mm, you gave him your trust. There's that, and he's strong, and, and I'm also very strong. So I feel like it is a good match. Mm -hmm. And so our strength, you know, I trust him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Fatal? Mm. It may not be distrust, but it's resentment. I thought that I would have deserved someone more handsome. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I would have my pick. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And not 20 years older than you. Yeah, that too. Well. <laughs> All right. And Virgin? Some suspicions. I mean, she wants to trust him, but he seems so cloaked and multi-faced. So we'll say a no. I guess so. But I don't think that's unkind. He just seems a little right. suspicious because he doesn't seem particularly sincere. Right. Like, that's a good point. No one could be that sincere if they're mm. showering so much mm. attention on you. What's the catch, basically? Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Uh -huh. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> At least one of us trusts him, so there's a little bit of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you have to have yeah. some level. Uh huh. Really so so, so he buys it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Why would you want? So I have one face thing that one of the parts of it is that the groundskeeper would ask you a question, 
off a list provided and you can mark a trauma to earn a second question, what benefit does it do a person to earn questions? Well, you get X number of questions about, say, you're looking at a weird object. And so you've answered one of those questions, but you're like, oh, I really need to know why, or I really want to know who that person in the locket is, or whatever. But you end up asking the question, so that you asking the question brings the answer out, because then the person gets to choose mm -hmm. an answer? Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Yeah, there's, there's a certain amount of um, co-GMing in this game, where got sometimes it. you're given an opportunity to define the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, oops. Okay, so then we've got sisterly bonds. So oh, yeah. we'll do this right. again. We'll, we'll go once around for each one. You want to go this way? Or you want to do? Let's play yeah, out. Let's reverse it. Mm -hmm. Thank All you. Right. So we'll start mm -hmm. with the virgin. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it says here that you trust your sisters for the most part, but so fill in the blank of one of your other sisters for that first one and read it out loud. But I don't know. <laughs> do you want to pass? For now? Sure. That'd be great. That'd be All lovely. Right. Fatal, your sisters are who they are, boring and predictable, <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I was just, I'm still deciding. But yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> boring and predictable, but Animus has no idea of a woman's true power. Explain why I wish to teach her. Well, she rejects that which is feminine and that which is soft, mm -hmm. and yeah. clearly mm. she does not see what it is to be completely woman. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I wrote something so similar. I, yeah, I have some. And oh. okay. I tried to draw. We'll, we'll do oh, one, we'll, we'll do we'll, one oh, at a time. Oh, no. Oh. Animus. Okay. So well, you are, yeah, go ahead and read that. All right, well, the first one I'll. Okay, so I, I hold myself apart from my sisters, but which <laughs> is the only one who soothes me? Explain the time they calmed your rage. Now, Ooh. this might get a little dicey. Good. But. You mentioned that flint. Yes. Right? So I think there may be some times when I've been so rage-filled that I've had to do things to um, uh, hurt myself in order to kind of like diminish that rage. Mm. So Using the flint. Using the flint or the Ooh. fire or something in order to calm down. Yeah. Because the emotions just get too much. Okay. And so who is that that's helping you to soothe? Witch. Is the witch. That's okay. what I was talking about. Oh, 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 I'm so oh. sorry. I thought I made that clear. I think I, you said blank is what I heard. I misunderstood. I said witch. Okay. So witch is the only oh, one who soothes okay. me. Oh, okay. Oh, witch. Oh, yeah, the witch. Witch is the only one. Oh, okay. oh, witch. Yeah, and I'm staring creepily at Renee. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, mean, I assumed you had picked her, but I also heard it as witch with an H. Yeah. 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 So, oh, oh, my God. Well, I thought you were talking. I thought you were talking to her because she's the one who mentioned the flint. Right. So, uh, I was like, sorry. <laughs> Clear now. Witch. W T. Yes. You can call me Crone. All that's right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's my. Perfect. That's, Thank you. Okay. Yes. My apologies. All right. Witch. <laughs> what, which, which? what you got? Mm -hmm. um, it's almost exactly yours. Mm -hmm. um, animus is a useful tool. Oh, what's the, power. The, what's the oh. intro uh, text? Oh, oh, okay. Your sisters. Oh, that's right. They're different. Your sisters are not nearly as important as power, but uh, mm. animus is a useful tool. I got you. Mm, yeah, true. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfeminine power opens the door to possession. Mm. Oh, mm. interesting. Ah, so that's how they helped you your pursuit of blasphemous craft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> feminine power. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, I skipped that part. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right, mother. Mother. Uh, it says, you know best and try to guide your wayward sisters, but the virgin irritates me with their obstinance. <laughs> 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 it says, explain the time they undermined my authority. Um... Um, <laughs> well, I probably could just say something like the virgin is just so innocent that they say yes to something without fully looking at all the different. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's like, why did you blow? <laughs> we should have thought about that some more. Right. Yeah. Right. Why am I doing this now? Exactly. All um, right. And virgin. So you trust your sisters for the most part, but anim so I had to someone has to be my enemy, which is why it was hard for me. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna say animus. Yeah. Blackens your innocence with her every word. Mm -hmm. Explain how she became your enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think because the animus is so willing, just from your answers, to be 
trusting and put yourself in a position where you feel like there's equality and there's trust and it's all good. And I think that the Virgin feels deep down like she wants to see all the beauty in the world, but she also is afraid that if she actually gives that trust to someone, then they'll destroy that vision of beauty that she's created because they yep. won't agree or they won't live up to it or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that that makes I total think. sense. Yep. Yeah. All right, and that brings us back around to Vital for the second one. All right, so my sisters are who they are, boring and predictable, but <laughs> <laughs> I try to draw in the mother with my seductive aura. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, explaining how I hide my insecurities from her, I do not let her know that I am not as confident as she is in her own logic and foresight. Right. Hell yeah. Because you're more of an instinctual. Impulsive. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I try to let her think that I've already thought it all out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. You hold yours. I hold myself apart from my sisters, but I'm envious of Fatal. Hmm. Explain why you can never compare to them. Because she gets things done subtly as opposed to, like, the hammer. Mm. Uh, so then it's just yeah. like, oh, like, I want to be <laughs> subtle like that, but I can never be that. I will never be that. Right. Mm. Right. So that's why I'm envious. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. And which? Your sisters are not nearly as important as power, but Fatal draws an evil to her. Explain what you have done to keep that evil at bay. Ooh. The expression of desire, real or false, leaves one vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I adopt the steely face. Because you're, you're giving up power. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mom. Uh, <laughs> I trust my witch to have back, my back. Mm-hmm. Explain the time they supported me in a time of need. Mm. I would say that the witch helps the mother with the um, the the, the there's a, I can't think of the word for it. the um, middle I want to say middle ground messy mm. unpleasant ugliness of birth. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the witch has my back in the time of need. The greatest wow. time of need, which would be a birth for me. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So you feel confident that you can, you, despite your skinny frame, with the witch's assistance, you can bear You're a child. Not, well, the chances or, are going to get better. Yeah. Yeah, or not have one. Or not have one. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Manage pregnancies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not minor. Mm-mm. No. That's huge. And uh, lastly, Bridget. You trust your sisters for the most part, but a mother often helps you play tricks on the others. Explain a time when she was your ally in mischief. <laughs> I think uh, the... Well, I was thinking in real life a time when she would have helped me do it, but in general, I think that the authority that mother represents and carries with her uh-huh. allows the virgin to sort of supplant that as her authority yeah. and be able to create control over a situation where she that way. Right. Yeah. Where she wouldn't yeah. necessarily feel like if it was just her, she'd feel like, no, I'm too innocent to listen to me, but if I have authority, I can like force that innocent viewpoint on everybody else. Mm. Ooh, nice. I didn't expect that sentence to end like that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I know, me neither. I was like, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's oh, mischief, like so mm-hmm. that seems like mischief. Mm-hmm. Okay. Definitely. But I feel like in real life, maybe on her, like, every other off week, she goes to neighboring villages and, like, pretends to be this person she isn't, like, walks around with all this authority that mm-hmm. she doesn't actually mm-hmm. feel and convinces people mm-hmm. she's, like, a, a duchess or something from like, neighboring, mm-hmm. like, just totally fucking with people. That's um, nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's all the bonds. Did everyone get a, at least one bond? Like, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Okay then, so that is sisters are created. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everyone have your face picked out in one way yeah. or another. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. No. What is, yeah. What does demonstrating your sincerity mean? Okay. Oh, actually, yes, that is the last bit here. That's a thing. Mechanics. So, like every powered by the apocalypse game, we've got moves. Oh yeah. So there's maiden moves. That's something that anyone can do at any time. And do not require roles. Okay. Okay. So you've got uh, care for someone, um. and these these will be available for you to reference. Mm-hmm. But care for someone, investigate a mysterious object. Ooh. Yeah. And take stock, as in take stock of a tense situation. Okay. Okay. 
So caring for someone is pretty straightforward. It's just um, you're going to encounter residents of the house. Okay. Past and present. And, uh, <laughs> and um, some of them will be in pain. Or some of them will be maybe a little dangerous. You can try to soothe them. Okay. Got it. Okay. Investigating mysterious object, uh, you get to ask two questions from this <laughs> list of four. So this would be, Sage, what we were talking about. So if you wanted to ask three questions, you could, you know, and you had that face move. Right. You could take a trauma and ask three. Okay. Uh, so they're like, whose, items, whose item is this? What memories does this item hold? What about this item is odd or uncanny? And why did Bluebeard keep this item? Ooh. Is that a type of discrepancy between these two? Because this says you have to mark a trauma in a second. But you're saying you already get to ask. It should say additional question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take stock. So it has to be a tense situation. You have to be, you know, genuinely tense about what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just like making a perception roll, <laughs> you know. Right. But taking stock, you get to okay. ask. You get to ask one. And that is, what stalks the bride from the shadows? What traps have been laid for the bride? What does this place demand of the bride? And what horror here is hidden from the bride? Ooh. Those are your maiden so moves. It's not just the closet that has this shit no. in the whole house. Right. Yeah. So this is, Blue, this is, this is uh, Bluebeard as directed by Guillermo del Toro. You still lie you trust him. <laughs> yeah, I am. It's a big old, it's, it's Crimson Peak. It's a big old haunted house kind yeah. of situation. We wouldn't be in this situation if we didn't trust him on some level. That's right. Okay, so then there's two other types of moves. There's a ring move and an exit move. Okay. Ring? Right, hold on. Mm -hmm. A ring. A ring move. All right. Okay. And, and an down. exit move. This a is ring. Where your ring comes into the Yes. I guess so. Oh, right. Okay. So, ta -da, there's the ring. Mm -hmm. So, only one person controls the ring at a time. Like I said, the maiden moves can be undertaken by anybody. Okay. All right. You can mm -hmm. you can talk to each other. You can debate things. Ooh. You can even kind of say, "Oh, I'm even if you don't have the ring, I would like to touch that or I'd like to look at that or whatever." However, the person with the ring ultimately has final say on everything. Oh, okay? oh, it's and, like a veto. Mm, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a veto, and also has access to ring moves. Okay. Oh, so only the ring moves. Additional ring moves. Mm -hmm. So uh, ring moves are. Shiver from fear. Now this is uh, this is a fun mechanic. Right. This is something that is actually activated by the player. So if you, as the player, you have the ring and you are freaking the fuck out, <laughs> <laughs> you can either voluntarily say I'm shivering from fear, or if I notice you squirming in your seat, oh, okay. I'll say you're shivering from fear, aren't you? <laughs> and that's your move. That's your. That is a move. Okay. And so it says when you shiver from fear, name the thing you are most afraid will happen. The groundskeeper. <laughs> <laughs> a million spiders from the sea. Uh -huh. The groundskeeper will tell you how it's worse than you feared. Oh, yeah! Oh, <laughs> but what you don't know Delight. is... <laughs> Delight. Delight. I know. There's two million spiders. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little <laughs> The spiders all have baby spiders on their backs. Oh. <laughs> That's why you're the groundskeeper. Well, please. <laughs> exactly. Well done. <laughs> eggs. A million egg sacks. So shit. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's not just one spider. It's like a, a Stop, million little ones. Please. 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 <laughs> please. <laughs> Let this happen. Let this happen. <laughs> 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 Baby spiders. They're so cute and translucent. Like, like just. Name the thing you're most afraid of. Remember that moment when I was like, what if I'm going to vomit? This no. might be that moment. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's laughing at the ex now, huh? <laughs> 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 it's like, did anyone else see the adorable photo of a. No, stop! <laughs> This is centipede program all for little young. Oh, the wolf spider? No, centipede. Centipede. I haven't seen but this yes, all the time. I know the one you're talking about. All those legs. Yes, thousands of legs. If I walked so into that and saw that in a room, I think I'd just like, nope, done, I'm moving. I'm just out. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nightmare once that my whole house was mm. filled with like, and every time I'd clean a room, I'd go back and the room would have more and more cobwebs. Oh, dear. And oh, wow. And they were, and people kept coming and being like, what's the problem? And I'd be like, oh, oh. look at them. Oh, yeah. Making a note here. Ah, don't tell him these spiders. things. Spiders. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No, it's no, fine. no, it's fine. I like yeah, spiders. spiders. Yeah, more of them. Yeah. You know, but it's sent to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah, you, yeah, you won't be getting is, anything when you have the ring. He'll you tell you. You hit your, your mortar and pestle the bluebeard, so it's fine. I'll just mush them all up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll be just, fine. Just... Okay, so anyway, so if you're yes. shivering, if you're shivering from fear, Ooh. you get to keep the ring and choose two, or pass the ring and choose one. And they, these are 
Uh, the, the source of the fear infects the bride with its perversion. <laughs> yes. has, has the bride in its clutches right now? Mm. Or speaks to you? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Talking infesting spiders. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then another ring move is caress a horror. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah of course. When you caress a horror, you roll plus blood. So that means you roll 2d6, you add your blood attribute, your okay. blood stat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a hit, which is a seven or better. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, the horror is swayed by your stroke. Direct mm. what was intended for you to another victim in the house. Oh my! So that might be a really yeah. Oh shit! Fractiousness. <laughs> they have an example in this book where you stumble upon a ritual in the cellar. What? And you're being pinned down to the altar, and this what? like gigantic pan figure with a huge erect penis is nice. coming out of the shadows, and you're like, start on her, and you <laughs> direct it onto one of the serving girls, and then run the fuck out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Start that way. Yeah. Yeah. Over there. Around the table. Bye. Yeah. yeah. She wow. likes it. Yeah. yeah she's, uh, no, I think there's something like uh, wow. satiate yourself with her first so that you can go longer with me. Oh! <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Oh. That's a good strategy. No, no, no shit, right? No, no, that one away. I mean, no. I mean, the examples of play in this book, I'm like, oh! <laughs> I'm so excited. Sorry. This is what we're playing. I'm sorry you had to read that. <laughs> And I read it right before bed. Oh, All right, so. Oh, Jesus. He's been having a hard, yeah, anyway, hard night. So. Just don't close your eyes. <laughs> Ever. Okay. Ever. Did you dream of horrific pan penis monster? I, it was a lot of Bluebeard related dreams. It was weird. There were um, the blue pubes. There were blue pubes? Blue pubes, blue pubes of course. <laughs> so the carpet does match That's my That's my everyday best. life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. What? <laughs> You just know me for my Merkin. Um, so. <laughs> oh, I'm in love with you. I'm so in love with you, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and I get to live with him, Jen. <laughs> so. For now. <laughs> Until the <pot> <laughs> All right. So, anyways, um, all the time with Powered by the Apocalypse games, a seven or better is a hit. However, a seven to nine is a mitigated hit. So there's some sort of complication. In this case, on a seven to nine, it will shift its attention, it's but bad. only if you participate in some way. Got it. So you have to help out. Got it. Right. Okay, so then another ring move is dirty yourself with violence. <laughs> when you dirty yourself with violence, roll plus carnality. On a hit, you inflict trauma as established and choose one. Disable them, silence them, or mutilate them. <gasps> on a seven to nine, choose one from below as well. Your vulnerability opens you up to trauma, or your carelessness leads you in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. So you're choosing trauma for someone else, and potentially also for you. For yourself. Cry out for help. When you break down and cry out for help, roll plus resilience. On a hit, a house servant comes to address your concerns and calm your hysteria. On a seven to nine, they help you, but first they need proof of your loyalty to Bluebeard. So and they're lastly, all, they're all like. Into it. him. Yeah. I have this handful of blue pubes. This <laughs> <laughs> intimacy. Yeah. Look how much he loves me. Look. I have them. <laughs> Look. Cool. All right, so. Look at them. So instead of a clip of his beard, it's a baggie of blue <laughs> pubes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow, that takes Get on a totally for a different, Facebook. less romantic feeling. Like, <laughs> yeah. maybe I get Just a Ziploc bag. Ziploc bag of pubes <laughs> with the scoby in it. This is blue! <laughs> <laughs> the scoby has blue hair. As long as it's enough to give someone a gorilla mask. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and lastly is give up the ring. You can voluntarily give up the ring and pass it to the next sister, which is the sister of your choice. Mm-hmm. And then you are you are immune to trauma until Ooh. that sister passes the ring. So, wow. nice. so that's cool. yeah. So uh, that's something else is with trauma. You can either take it yourself or share it among your sisters. Okay. Okay. So. Um, let me see here. Can you uh, ever remove trauma, or is it like once you get crazy enough, you're just... You can gonna... absolutely remove trauma, and that is, by, and we'll actually get to that uh, presently, but that is by taking a token of faithfulness. Mm-hmm. So by oh, showing yeah. that you are faithful to Bluebeard, you can heal your trauma. So you like... Mm-hmm. So something so weird you he gives you, or like... to yeah. successfully cry out for help and get a servant to assist you, mm-hmm. by proving your faithfulness, that action will... Take away trauma. Yes. Yeah. No, to them you prove loyalty. Right? right, right. Yeah, we'll get into faithfulness here right. in a second. Okay, because right. he's gone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's gone. Yeah. No. Um, so, yeah. So. And is demonstrating your sincerity a similar. I guess that's what I was asking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it seemed to be a lot of. Your faithfulness. 
Okay. Yeah, can we have a count of the different demonstrables because they seem a little overlappy? Okay, uh, proving loyalty is just narrative. Okay. So the servant might say, how can I trust you? And you would have to make something up. Make something yeah. up. Uh, token of faithfulness is an actual game mechanic, okay. and, and we will get to that okay. in a second. Um, so you can, um, yeah, so you can either take uh, trauma entirely, like if I say take three trauma, you know. Jeez, that's a lot of trauma. That is a lot of trauma. That, that, would, re that would represent a, a very know. major trauma. All right. You could say, you cut I'm. Off your finger to I'm, demonstrate your loyalty. Yeah, 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 yeah for uh, real. Um, uh, it can also be emotional, though. Trauma is, right. is not just physical damage, it can be any, any kind of mental or emotional pain as well. Yeah. Mm. So uh, so you can you can voluntarily share that out. So you could say I want to give one trauma to mother and one trauma to virgin and I'll take one myself. But if you have given up the ring, then you're safe from being assigned trauma until oh, uh, right. until that until, until the pass. second until, until the next sister passes. And so yeah. the ring doesn't necessarily go in a circle at school. Oh no. Like, no, yeah. it's just whoever you want to give it to. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. Do we do we want to use a different ring? Is Des okay with us using her no, wedding ring? You know what? That was her idea. A little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, because, yeah, because I don't want to like. That's why we're all here. Or, like, I, <laughs> to be I uncomfortable. Have, nervously chewing. I have a ring that's super <laughs> durable that's it. not. No, I mean if no one else minds, but I'm fumble fucky, so like it's totally possible that I would drop it while I'm holding it. Well, we it's, don't have any places oh. here that it could go. It's our, I've already done. We don't have any sewer grates or anything. Okay. So it's a garnet. Sewer grates. Um, <laughs> So and it is a blood, it is a blood red garnet. It's a blood, so yeah. okay. yeah. it's, gorgeous, yeah. so. it's a very Just nice ring. Yeah, probably don't eat it, Edie. Don't eat it, and also right. um, <laughs> yeah. don't let Edie. I just thought it looked very much. Like of it does. Like, it's period. It's very it's old. It does. Looking, yeah. So it's, it's ornate. It's gorgeous. Yeah. All right. So then. Um, we have the exit moves. So the, the, the fundamental foundation of the game is you're moving from room to room throughout the mansion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every time you go into a room, uh, you are in there until you do an exit move. Okay. And so an exit move can be one of two things. You can escape the room without proposing a truth about that room. Okay. So every room has weird things going on in it and it's going to give you some truths about Bluebeard's true identity Ooh, and what has gone yeah, on in this house, yeah. all right. previous oh, brides, that kind of thing. Yeah. If it's all too much, you just want to get the fuck out, or you're, or you're scared that the truth might be too much, you can do an escape. Okay. However, that allows me to offer you a hard bargain or ugly choice, and then nice. it's up to you to decide if you want to pay that price. Awesome. And then once we hear the price, can we then choose to stay in the room? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the other way to get out of a room is to propose a truth. When you propose a truth about a room, detail what you think happened in the room, mm -hmm. to whom, and why. Mm -hmm. Next, describe the token you take that supports your interpretation of what happened here and mark it on the appropriate token track. Token okay. track. So I have the token track here. Okay. So there's three of faithfulness and three of disloyalty. Mm -hmm. So I will mark those okay. as you take them. So you're saying that we can decide for ourselves what those things are mm -hmm. as we go through? So there aren't like say six specific items that have Correct. those connotations, whatever we okay. make up. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. It'll, be ba it'll be based on the stuff in the room. That's why you yes. can say you know, it over and over again. Like if there's oh, a okay. creepy painting, you could take a tear off piece of the canvas from the painting and that would be the token, mm. right? Okay. But it's up to you to decide whether that creepy painting represents uh, you know, a oh, token he's so of faith. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, I can't exactly. Wait for my portrait. He painted this woman like one of his French girls. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what happens when we get to three? We'll get there. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> so if it is a token of faithfulness, you are closer to proving that you trust in your husband. Your trust in your husband is well placed, and you heal one trauma. If it is a token of disloyalty, you are closer to proving that your unkind suspicions about your husband are true and you mark one trauma. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... That's interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Two of us are gonna die. What if parts <laughs> of you die? Okay, so then oh. once you have filled in all your trauma, you mm -hmm. are shattered. And oh. that's the point where you flip your character sheet over. Ah. <laughs> Work. Okay. Yes. And, and, your, and your your role in the game changes. That's awesome! Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really I cool. love this. I know! This is so great. It is possible for all five sisters to become shattered. Oh, of course. Bluebeard gets home and you're just a screaming wreck with a knife. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Like a bow, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we need to talk. Yeah. Hey, man. I'm, I'm there for that. Yeah. It's like a great option. I know. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers everything. We've got the basic mechanics, you've got your sisters created, and I think we're ready to go. We're doing well on All time, right. so Excellent. here we go. Can Bluebeard's voice be Sean Connery? Yo! No! <laughs> no, you don't want to ruin the character. Exactly. Yeah, okay. No, he's Vincent Price, I established oh, that. Yeah, and he's already had his Vincent cameo Price. and left, so. Oh. That's right! Yeah, oh, okay. he's gone. <laughs> so. Uh. All right. I can totally picture Technicolor blue. Yes. Like Vincent. It's like a Russ Meyer kind <laughs> of, you know. Uh-huh. Yes. Although I'm thinking like Al Rickman, really. Oh, that would also work for oh, more modern. Really yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, every time I mention Vincent Price, I just imagine him trying to read poetry to Edward Scissorhands. And <laughs> <laughs> to himself and it's too delightful. It's, really. not, it's not scary. Mm. Even though it's creepy. It's I guess I'm thinking scary. of him in uh, in those Ed- Edgar Allan Poe adaptations yep. from the yeah. early 60s. The yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just so serious looking. The sisters are defined. We know who the bride is. Next episode, we'll begin to explore her new home. What horrors await? Tune in to find out.